about y'all, but I, I sent something in this place tonight. Amen. Hey, and anywhere Jesus is, you can send something. Uh, I want to tell you, it's like the book of Acts. I hear the sound of a rushing mighty wind. Amen. Amen. I'm just honored to be here tonight. I want you to know that. I, I fell in love with the, you folks and your pastor and uh, his sweet wife. Uh, they, they have ministered to me and my wife when she was here with me on Sunday. And man, uh, you, you've got a sweet congregation. And uh, boy, you better do everything you can to guard that. Don't ever let the devil try to do anything to take that away. That is precious. And that's the way God wants it to, to be. I should take your Bible tonight and turn to 2 Timothy chapter 4. And I really want to go somewhere else, but I really feel led. This is what God wants me to say tonight, so I'm just going to try to mind God. 2 Timothy 4. Heard about a preacher and a guy with a camper pulled up in the parking lot of the church. And the preacher went out there to talk to him, and they talked for a little while. And the preacher looked at that camper and said, that sure is a mighty good looking camper you have there. He said, how many does it sleep? He said, well, it sleeps about eight. The preacher said, that's good. And the man said, that's a sure nice looking church you got there. And the preacher said, yeah, it sleeps about 80. <laughs> well, could I just say tonight, I believe it's time for the church to wake up. I believe it's time for us to wake up in a lot of areas, and I think the area that I'm going to talk about tonight, and by the way, tonight and tomorrow night, these crosses are going to be here. There's cards still here if you have names that God lays on your heart tonight or is laid on your heart that you want to nail to that cross. We're going to leave those cards uh, for you to pray over them, but uh, you never know what God will do. Pastor said there's been three. Uh, we never have done these cross services in our church where somebody somewhere sometime has not come back, said, preacher, my boy got saved. My daughter came home. Preacher, a miracle took place. And James says, you have not because you ask not. And so don't it ever, let it ever be said that we didn't get what God wanted us to get because we didn't ask for it. So let's ask. If you found 2 Timothy 4, would you stand in honor and reverence to the reading of God's holy, inspired, infallible, inerrant word? Go to verse number 6. Paul said, I'm now ready to be offered. I, I heard about that service y'all had last night with Dr. Curtis Barbary. He's one of my favorite guys. And uh, I heard about what God did. What a great time y'all had. And Paul's coming to the end of his life. He said, the time of my departure is at hand. I fought a good fight. Well, if I could encourage you tonight, fight a good fight for Jesus. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. Henceforth, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all those also that love is appearing. Verse 9. Do thy diligence, Timothy, to come shortly unto me. Verse number 13. The cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus, when you come, bring with thee and the books. Well, preachers like their books. Amen. They, they like the book and they like their books. Bring the books, but especially the parchment. Make sure you bring, uh, God just may give me something else that he wants me to write down and leave with you. Bring the parchment with you. And then verse 21, this is what he says again. Do thy diligence to come before winter. I understand in my reading that it was a uh, Presbyterian minister who first called his sermon, Come Before Winter. And since that time... Everybody from Adrian Rogers to Dr. Jerry Vines to every preacher in every backwood church or frontline church in the middle of the city has preached on that title. And so it's not original, but I'm preaching tonight on this subject, Come Before 
winner. Would you pray with me? Jesus, you bless my heart just by being in this place tonight. Lord, the spirit that is here, the wonderful music, Lord, the man of God that you have called to lead this fellowship and his wife, what a, my, my spirit is just bore so much witness with theirs. And these men of God tonight that would come out and these wonderful people, Lord, we need something. Lord, we want something. And oh God, I pray that God, you'd send it. And Lord, when, when you do, don't let the enemy keep us glued to our pews. God, may we get out of those pews and down these aisles and on these altars. And God, may we expect and believe for you to do what you want to do in this place tonight. And Lord, we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you and you may be seated. Now, wintertime comes in a lot of ways. Sometimes it comes age-wise, and probably many of us in here tonight, however old that we might be, I, I get a little tweet from a preacher every morning, and every morning it's just about the same. Lord, thank you for letting me see another day. Thank you for giving me another. This is the day the Lord hath made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. Wintertime comes in different seasons, uh, as we look at them in the summer and the spring and the fall and the winter. But then it comes in our time of life. And winter time comes at different ages. Was it long ago that I got word, the, the news came on. I believe she was a three-year-old girl, no more than four. And she'd gone to a Christian school and she was getting out of the car. Her mama let her out of the car to go into the school, and somehow that little girl got turned loose, and just like all children, man, there were 10 of us, and I know about us, and then uh, we had three, and uh, man, they'll scamper away in a hurry, and you got to watch them carefully. The sad news was that little girl took off running, and one of those cars that was in line to take their children hit that little girl, and she died at three or four. I got a note a little while ago and our, our, one of our staff members said that y'all pray for a 10th grader that was skateboarding and fell off the skateboard and the other student didn't see him and ran over him. And so I don't know whether he's living or not. This morning I got a call real early and one of my members said, uh, Preacher, we woke up this morning and went in the room where our 37-year-old son was sleeping, and he was gone. He's dead. So I made my way to that house, and the police were there, and the coroner was there, and I can only imagine, and some of you have been there. A sad, sad sight. But wintertime had come. For a three-year-old, for a 10th grader, for a 37-year-old. And friend, I want you to know that wintertime's coming for every one of us. And one day what they sing about, man, that's why if you're saved, when they sing about seeing Jesus, that, hey, that, he's worthy, friend. We, we, can, we can shout about him. But tonight, you need to make sure you're ready. Can you imagine Paul writing his last letter to Timothy prior to being executed? He's in a Roman cell, and the Holy Spirit of God revealed to Paul, Paul, your days are about over with. Paul, you're about to come home and be with Jesus. And so Paul, he sits down and writes this farewell letter to Timothy, his young son in the ministry and in the faith. He said, Timothy, I want you to come and see me down here in this prison one more time, Timothy, I want to spend some time with you, Timothy, but, but do your diligence to come before winter. D don't forget my coat because the cloak, it gets cold down there in that Roman jail. And Timothy, don't forget my books, the days are long. Timothy, bring that parchment with you because I'm just believing God might say something else to me, but Timothy, 
Listen, do your diligence to come before winter. Paul's in Rome, Timothy's probably in Ephesus, and so Timothy's got to go down and get on a boat, and he's got to sail to Rome. But you see, you, you couldn't travel from Ephesus to Rome in the wintertime. You had to go while the sailing was good. And I can imagine Timothy was like most of us tonight, or many of us at least, and said, you know, I need to go see old, Tim, old Paul. I, I need to take him that coat. I, I need to take him his books and the parchment and I need to spend a little time in fellowship with Paul. And I intend on doing it. There's somebody listening to me in this building or be listening by YouTube or however it's going to be broadcast. And you intend to get saved. You, you intend to sell out to God. You intend to follow through on what God's been talking to you about. You intend to, and even churches with good intentions. Friend, I want to tell you, in this world in which we live, we better get at it now. I preach a message out of Nehemiah and title it, Get Her Done. Hey, we better get her done, friend, because time is swiftly passing by, and your good pastor and I were talking just a little while ago. Man, I'm telling you, it seems like uh, this old world has just gone crazy. And Jesus may just be ready to step out on a cloud and come back and get us. And that excites the church. And it ought to grieve us too. Because I got folks I know who wouldn't go if he came back. And so wintertime is coming. If we were like Timothy, I intend to go and I'm going to do it. And, and before you know it, Winter time's about to set in. Old Timothy runs down there to the shore and he goes down there and buys him a ticket and gets on that boat and he sails to Rome and he gets to Rome and he gets off that boat and he runs down to the jail and there's the sheriff and he said, I've come to see Paul. Paul. Well, son, you're too late. Paul was executed three weeks ago. Have you ever had happened to you what I've had happened to me before? When you sense the Holy Spirit of God, whether you were on an elevator or at a gas station, or wherever you were at, and you sensed God wanted you to talk to somebody about Him, and you wanted to, and you intended to, and you removed to, but you didn't. And I don't know about you, I went away feeling lower than a grub worm. Because I knew I missed an opportunity. I remember that guy I used to be a, before I went in the ministry, I was what they call a rag man. I worked for rental uniform. And I delivered shop rags to filling stations and all kinds of places like that. And, and it was like uh, the Holy Spirit said to me that day, you talk to that mechanic about me. You tell him about me. Well, I'd been a little sly with my witness, and I, I got those rags, they're about 50 in a bundle, and I'd slip some tracks in there. And I knew they had to unwrap them, and I'd put tracks in there. And that's good, but it wasn't good enough. God said, I want you to witness that mechanic. And I disobeyed God. And I went back the next week on my route, and when I got there, I, I said, where's he at? I got to talk to him. And he got on his motorcycle and he went riding and crashed and died. And the Holy Spirit said, you tell him about me. And I didn't. Come before winter. There's some things you and I better get busy doing because winter time is coming. So let me mention these real quickly. Number one, we better go to the lonely before winter comes. Do you know this world is filled with lonely, frustrated people all over the world? Somebody did a news article and said the, one of the main problems in America today is people that are lonely, and especially after COVID, 
they, they've been inside and not gotten outside. And, and the world's got a lot of answers for them. But I tell you what they need. The world needs Jesus. That's what they need. But somehow we got to get out and we got to take Jesus to them. They're lonely people everywhere and they're wanting somebody to reach out to them, but I'm afraid we're not going. Now, the false witnesses are going out there. They was at my house Saturday morning, I told you. We used to be that. We used to do that. There are lonely people everywhere. Now, we can put our heads in the sand if we want to, but I want to tell you, there are single moms out there just aching for somebody to give them a word of encouragement. Sometimes single dads and boys and girls by the truckloads that are lonely. I remember one of my deacons said, Preacher, will you go with me to make a visit? I said, I'll go where we're going. And he owned a business and he locked his business up to go see this man. And I said, man, if he'll close his business down, there's no way I'm going to tell him, no, I'm going with him. When we got there, there was a retired highway patrolman sitting there with a 38 pistol in his lap. And we sat there and we talked to that man and his job was going out to everywhere there had been a, a wreck and a casualty. He had pictures. He was thumbing through that picture book looking at all those casualties and it just got to him and he was about to end his life. And that precious deacon and I got to sit there with Dale and tell him about Jesus. And I want to tell you, friend, that gun was put down and Jesus was in his heart before we got out of that building. We better go to the lonely. Man, you can call on the phone and get all kind of stuff and some of the stuff you can get is not good stuff. And in fact, I, I told a pastor before we came, man, that there's some people out there using some of the technology today for some of the most devilish stuff you and I could ever think of. We better get out there with the word of God. They're lonely people everywhere waiting for somebody to come by and just talk to them. Timothy, do your diligence to come before winter. A preacher, a good friend of mine, preacher went to, to buy a car. When he got to the car lot, the car salesman looked at him and said, aren't you preacher so-and-so? And he said, I am he said, hadn't you written some books? He said, I sure have. He said, preacher, I'd like to have some of those books. My, my life's kind of falling apart, and I, I need some help, preacher. I'd sure like to get those books. Preacher said, I'll, I'll, I'll get those books to you. He's an evangelist, so he, and a, and a good one, by the way. He went away about three weeks preaching revivals, and he came back. And that car was giving a little bit of trouble. So he took it back and the same salesman was there and said, Preacher, my life's falling apart. I sure would like to have them books. Made a note. Went away again when he come back and got home. His wife had put a newspaper clipping in a little folder there that he had at his desk. And it said, local car salesman shoots himself and he's dead. And this preacher who is a great man of God. He said, I heard that salesman say, Preacher, my life's falling apart. I, I really would like to have some of those books, preacher. We better go to the lonely before winter. There are hundreds and hundreds of preachers every year that either get fired from their churches or they get out of the ministry and they're hurting and they're lonely there are people all over this congregation and the congregation I pastor they are lonely they just need somebody to go out there and see them we can't quit church lonely people are everywhere and Paul said do your diligence to come before winter but second of all we better go to our Loved ones before winter. Can I back up just a second and say, man, I, I hate what the devil's done to families 
out there in the world and can you come up real close and hear me tonight in the churches he don't like your family he don't like my family and he's going to do his best to tear it apart my only hope my only hope is in Jesus and he's able but he's my hope I want to tell you, church, they're hurting out there. I hate it. I despise it. I loathe the devil. He's a liar. He's a no good, sorry, good for nothing rascal. And I want to be like that lady. She told her preacher, said when God's going to throw him in the lake of fire, I'm going to ask God, say, would you wait just a minute? And she said, I'm going to ask him, if he'll let me give him one final kick before he throws him in a lake of fire. Now, I don't know about you, I'm sick and tired of all the devil has done. Now, I'm glad his day is coming, but I, I want to see a little victory right here, amen? And the only way you're going to have victory is in the Lord Jesus. What I'm trying to say is don't forget those lonely people out there. Some of them have royally messed their lives up. And by the way, such were some of us. And without Jesus, friend, listen, without Jesus, I'd be out there in a gutter somewhere tonight. I, even worse than that. And listen, they're out there. And somebody needs to go tell them about Jesus. The lonely. But, but your loved ones, man, homes are coming apart at the seams. We need to come before winter in our homes. Let me ask you guys, let's get under conviction tonight. When's the last time you told your wife that you loved her? You say, well, I told her when I first married her, if I change my mind, I'll tell her again. <laughs> now, I want to tell you, friend, that don't get it. Men like to hear it too, by the way. They, they might act macho and all this stuff. They like to hear it too. Amen. We better go to our loved ones before winter. Preacher went to make the visit. When he got out there to visit the wife of the man who just died, he walked in there and heard her screaming over and over. Oh, I... I wish I had let him. I, I wish I'd let him. They got up that morning like some couples do, and uh, if anybody here would dare say you've been married a long time and never had a disagreement, I probably wouldn't believe you about anything else either. Uh, sufficient to the day is evil thereof. I tell folks, me and my wife used to ride to church together, and sometimes we didn't sing Amazing Grace or How Great Thou Art because I got in the car. I was Sunday school superintendent, and she had to get two little girls ready and get them there, and I got there. I got to get to church. I don't know why that woman's not hurrying up, and I'm out there blowing the horn. You know, I'm telling you what, it wasn't a spiritual experience on the way to church. Now, I'm being honest. Your own life, if you want to, I'm being honest. But an amazing transformation took place when we drove up on the church parking lot. Hey, devil don't want you to come to church, especially a church like this that preaches like your pastor preaches and sings like, hey, he don't want you. Hey, you know what you ought to do if you have a good and on the way to church? Don't you turn around and go home. Man, you get to church and say, man, I need it. Let her rip, choir. Tell me, preacher. Listen, you go on, amen. He don't like Bible-believing churches. Oh, they got up and the grits weren't right and the eggs weren't right and he mullied grub and they got in a little argument. And then he went over there before he left and wanted to hug her. And she said, no. Oh, I wish I had let him. We better go to our, 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 our loved ones before winter time comes. I remember that... Uh, preacher who told the story of his son getting married and big old boy he said and said he was out there and the reception was there and my my boy called me over and I hugged my boy so proud of my boy and he reached in his pocket and pulled out a letter and gave it to me and read something like this said daddy 
Just want you to know on this important day in my life, I love you, Daddy. Thank you for all you ever done for me, Daddy. And he went on and talked about all the things Daddy had done, but he said, Daddy, most of all, thank you, Daddy, for telling me about Jesus. Hey, friend, you're going to... Hey, the, there's a lot of things in this life. There are no U-Hauls behind the hearse. But I'll tell you one thing you can take to heaven with you, that's your family. So, so God, hey, before wintertime, do your best to tell them about Jesus. We better go to the lonely before winter. Better go to the, our loved ones before winter. We better go to the lost before winter. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Used to be that people really believed that, even in our churches. Friend, saved people go to heaven. Lost people don't go to heaven. Don't matter how good they are. Doesn't matter how many times they've been baptized. Doesn't matter how many churches they're members of. If they've never been born again, blood washed, saved by the grace of God, they're not going to heaven. But the good news is everybody can go to heaven. I had a man tell me yesterday, and I, I agree with him. Yesterday, this man told me, we were talking about the Lord and talking about some things that preachers have preached sometimes, and he, he said uh, something to this nature one preacher did, that if a little boy or girl was not elected, then there was no way in the world that God could ever save them. Now, you can get tied up in that if you want to, but I believe John three sixteen for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I believe God will save anybody anywhere, anytime that'll turn to him. You've seen it, I've seen it. I've seen him sober up a drunk. I've seen harlots get pure. I remember that woman on a Saturday night knocking on the parsonage door and came in the den when me and my wife was there her mascara was running down her face and she said I'm a street walker from Greenville South Carolina and I told her about Jesus and she said will Jesus save somebody like me and I said ma'am and that's when I live about from here to that cross to the church I said if God won't save you in this den on Saturday night I don't want to go over there to that church in the morning and preach the gospel if God won't save you on Saturday night I don't don't have a message for a Sunday morning but you know what God saved her on a Saturday night and God can save anybody who will by faith trust in the blessed finished work of the old rugged cross amen, amen. we better go the loss before winter you've been there I've been there True stories, every story I've told you tonight, it's not a made-up of story, it's not preacher talk, it's a true story. The three stories I've told you, that's in the last few days. Preacher saw a lady in the back at the church. When she went out, the preacher was at the door, and she gave him her card that said something like this, said, Preacher, I'd sure like to talk to somebody about being saved. And so they waited and visitation came up. He and one of the deacons went out together and he took that card and I believe the woman's name was Diane. He said, I'm going to go see Diane tonight. She wants to know how to be saved. And the deacon said, well, preacher, before we go see Diane, let's go right up here on the hill. This guy, he, he's been in the community for 20 years. Let's go see him first. And so they make their way up there to where that man lived and for about two hours they sat there and listened while that man couldn't find the church anywhere that he would find suitable and you see the problem was probably not the churches it was probably the man but after two hours when they got out of the driveway they they said well you know it's late now we better see Diane another time and he said he got home so when he got home, he no more than sat down in his chair. The phone rang. He reached down there to get that phone, picked it up, and they said, is this pastor so-and-so? He said, it is. He said, do you know Diane? He said, I put my hand on my pocket where the card was and said, I sure do. In fact, I was going to see Diane tonight. Said, preacher, can you come quickly? He said, what's wrong? He said, Diane's husband has just stabbed him for her 14 times and She's dead. He said, I went over there, and it's kind of like the Bible said, I went over there and said I could see the blood there, and it seemed to be crying out to me 
Preacher, I'd, I'd love to be saved. Would somebody come tell me how to be saved? And he said, every time I go to that city and go by that place, it's like that blood cries up out of the ground. Would somebody tell me how to be saved? We better go to the lost before wintertime. One thing you and I are not going to do in heaven, there's not going to be any soul winning in heaven. Everybody goes to heaven's going to be saved. You don't get there unless you get born again. Hey, your ticket to get in there is the old rugged cross. And the only one that can grant that is the Son of God himself. Listen, that old song that says, y- y'all have heard it. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's been sung in this church. Sorry, I never knew you. I think it's called please search the book again. I thought my name was there. I went to church on Sunday, but I never knelt in prayer. Please search the book again before you make me go. I wish I had one of them testimony meetings like you was talking about, Pastor. We was having one of them testimony meetings that she's 69 years of age, been a church member for 40 years at least. In the middle of that testimony, she stood up and said, I'm not saved. I need Jesus. Well, we didn't say, well, that's the way we can think about it. Uh, No, she got saved. And old boy, a big old man that was a hunter, he stood up and said, you know, I don't have a testimony either. I'm not saved either. And he got saved. Fred, I want to tell you, Jesus still saved. Timothy, do your diligence to come before winter. Dr. Billy Graham, y'all heard of him, hadn't you? He was with John F. Kennedy. They were headed back. And President Kennedy said to Dr. Graham, this is his testimony now, I'd like to talk to you some more about these issues, talking about the second coming of Christ. Now, would you come and let's talk some more? And Dr. Graham was sick that day. And he said, can I do it another day? Can we do it another time? And so the president went his way and Dr. Billy Graham went his way. And in the next few days, President Kennedy was shot and he was gone. And Billy Graham said, I think about that over and over, and I, I wish, regardless of how I failed, I, I'd have went with him. And one last thing tonight. We need to go to the lonely. We need to go to our loved ones. We need to go to the lost. But some of you need to come to the Lord tonight because winter's coming. You know it just as sure as you're sitting there tonight. The Holy Spirit of God speaking to your heart, maybe... Even as we came in tonight, I believe the Spirit of God was was speaking to some folks tonight. We ought to come to the Lord before winter for three reasons. Number one, because of life's brevity. It's pointed unto man wants to die, and after that, the judgment. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. This night thy soul shall be required of thee. Life's Brevity. Well, I remember, I remember going to Fruitland Baptist Bible Institute there in Hendersonville, North Carolina. I remember going there. My two little girls, I have three now, but I had two then. I remember I'd come home. They'd ride their tricycles in front of that 10 by 46 trailer that, man, we thought it was a mansion, and to us it was. And I went to sleep and woke up, and they were grown. Can anybody testify to that? Overnight, I I remember this as a young guy. Well, if you were to tell me somebody was 60 or 70, I'd say, man, how does anybody live that long? Hello. Life's brief. A three-year-old, a 10th grader, a 37-year-old. Life's brief. And then not only should we come to the Lord because of the brevity of life, because of the opportunities of life. One day it'll be the last opportunity you ever have to come to Jesus. It'll be the last time you ever get to go to church. 
You know what people tell me? You know what they tell this pastor? You know what they tell these other men of God? You go to the nursing home. You, you go to the hospital. You go to the home where, where, where they're dying and, and they've got a terminal disease. You know what I hear over and over? Preacher, I wish I could go back to church one more time. I wish I could hear that choir one more time. I wish I could hear you preach one more time. I wish I could go to church one more time. But listen, that's okay if you're saved, but if you're lost, my friend, there'll come a day when it'll be the last time he'll ever knock. And but if he's knocking tonight and you say no, you are endangering yourself of hellfire, listen, and living an eternity without the precious Lord Jesus Christ. One day those opportunities, and listen, we could really go down a road there even for churches. Listen, if God's bringing something your way, and it's a God thing. You, you better never let it pass by. You better do what God wants you to do while the opportunity is there. And listen, can I just say in this message, not everybody will always agree when God's opportunities come by, but if it's a God thing, somebody's got to say, let's do it. Twelve of them went over there and spied out the land. Ten of them come back and said, we can't do it. And two of them came back and said, hey, let's go over and get what God's got for us. And, and they went over and conquered that land just as God said. You're going to have an opportunity. It'll be the last one. And then the last thing is not only life's brevity and life's opportunities, but life's necessities. And what he told Nicodemus? You must be born again. Now, I want to tell you, preaching's changed over the years, and there's some preachers now that have gotten away from this old book. And they preach things like, all roads lead to heaven. Are there several ways to get saved? And it sounds good, but it's a lie out of hell. There's one way to get saved, and that's through the cross of the Lord Jesus. Nicodemus, you must be born Again, So we got to seize those opportunities because winter time is coming our way. Jesus said in John 9, night is coming when no man can work. When that man, that woman, that boy, that girl that God said I want you to witness to, that neighbor, that co-worker, that family member that God said I want you to go and share the gospel with, there, there, there's coming a, a time when that opportunity will end and, and winter time will come. So tonight, before it comes in your life, what are you going to do about it? While the Savior of God speaks to your heart, why, the Lord Jesus, and in the person of the Holy Spirit, because no man comes to the Father unless the Spirit of God draws him. You say, preacher, I'm going to get saved when I have a feeling. Well, you can't back that up with the Bible. You don't have to have. Now, I like to feel good, amen? I, I felt something when this choir was singing. I, hey, I felt something when I was sitting on that pew when I came in here tonight, when the preacher got up making, hey, I felt something in this place, and I like to feel good, but feelings don't save you. Faith saves you. Faith and trusting God. Because to be honest, there's some day, if it went by feelings, I'd be as lost as a goat. I'm glad I got the Word of God to stand on. I'm glad I got the Son of God to stand on. I'm glad I got the Spirit of God that bears witness with my spirit that I'm a child of God. You better come before winter. Some of you maybe have left your first love. Not lost it, but left it. You know, that can happen in a, in a marriage. Somebody said a marriage has a propensity to get a little dull if you're not careful. You don't do the things that you used to do when you first got married. Remember, remember those days? I know, I know you got to think long and hard about that. Listen, I've been married 52 years. I, I understand you got you to go way back. I remember riding that little bicycle to go see my girlfriend who's my wife. Remember the little things you used to do? Well, the Bible kind of likens a marriage to the relationship 
of Christ and his church. How long has it been since you told the Lord Jesus that you loved him? Lord, I didn't come to ask for anything. I I didn't come to beg for anything, Lord, except I just want to tell you that I love you and I adore you. The old song said, my Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. For thee all the folly of sin I resign. My precious Redeemer, my Savior art thou. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, it's now. I'll tell you one of the sad things as a pastor. I've seen folks that, that seem like they were on fire for God. And they've got so far away from God, that is pitiful. And the only way it's going to get rekindled is going back. Jesus said to that church at Ephesus, go back and do the first works. You know what he said, church? Or else I'll come and blow your light out. Now, Fall Creek, Rock Springs, all these other churches, man, I don't want the light to go out. I want it to burn brighter. Man, I tell our folks, I pray and they ride down 123 that the Holy Ghost will reach out there and grab them. And they'll have to turn that car and come inside and say, what in the world's going on? You say, that's a little crazy, isn't it? Well, call it what you want to. I'm praying when they ride by and see the steeple, when they ride by and see the church, that God will reach out there and get a hold of them and bring them in. So wintertime's coming. What you gonna do? Better go to the lonely. These men of God, I talk to them every week in all kinds of scenarios. And some of them are people sitting on the pews that are saved by God's grace. They're just as lonely as they can be. They just need somebody to encourage them. You know, sometimes they don't need somebody to give them five formulas on how to be happy. You know what they need? An arm around the shoulder and somebody to cry with them. You better go to your loved ones before winners. Try your best. Listen, you can't save anybody. I can't save anybody. But I got to tell them. You better go to the lost. Because one day you'll witness to that last person. And some of you just might need to come to the Lord tonight. Because wintertime will set in on all of us one of these days. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Once I wandered in sin's black night There was no way to make my wrongs right Then the old accuser to the Lord did cry He is a sinner and now he must die Then I heard a voice say, Father, I'll go, and I'll pay a sin debt on Calvary's flow. I'll bear in my body the marks of the cross to save this poor child who is sin. Victory to me. There are those who rely 
on the works that they do and some men count on the prayers they pray through but when the battle's over and the victory My father's only son And it's still the blood That saves from sin It's still the blood That cleanses within From the highest star in heaven To the depths of the sea That brings victory to me And it's still the blood That saves from sin It's still the blood That cleanses within From the highest star in heaven To the depths of the sea Jesus, that brings victory to me. From the highest star in heaven to the depths of the sea, it is still the blood of Jesus that brings victory.